So in my last video, I showed you how to download the lesson plans that you have purchased. And so now what I'm going to do is show you how to use the lesson plans. When I was at some of my live events over the summer, I realized that I have not done a really good job of explaining how to use the lesson plans. So what I wanted to show you is just what I had intended to do with the lesson plans. This lesson plan book that I am looking at is the first grade lesson plan book. And so I'm going to make it a little bit smaller just so you can see. Um, I do have right here how to use these lesson plans and this little picture right here is actually going to go to this video that I'm recording. So just be on the lookout for that as you use the lesson plan so you can remember where to find the video. Um, usually my lesson plans are set up in months and so theoretically there are four weeks in every month and so each week we'll have a lesson for each grade level. So I'm looking right now at month one and my centers don't really start until a little bit later in the school year for the little people and so I want to tell you a little bit about how I do library centers and your options if you choose to do that. And so as you see here in month number two, I am starting centers. And I know that because it says down here at the bottom, uh, it says to introduce the centers and assign the center rotation groups. So um, every resource that you see here in the lesson plans, you can find on the website. You just head on over to the lesson plan resources. I'm going to click on first grade and I see here that I'm looking for the random group creator links and I know that because I, I see this right here in my additional resources and so I'm going to go right here and I'm just going to look down the list. The, the resources are in month order so I started with month one and went down so you'll see here that most of the items have an editable version and a PDF version I'm going to open it up here in word format and so I just open up this file here and this takes me to some links so these are some links that you can use to create random groups in your class and of course you don't have to use this this is just something that I use in my classroom so then we're gonna go on over to month two okay so or I'm sorry week two in week two the students are gonna draw a picture so there's no additional resources there um, let's see, this one is the center group spreadsheet template. So if you go back to those resources over here, you'll see center group spreadsheet. You just open that up and you can save all of these to your hard drive if you prefer. And so I'm just opening this up. This is the spreadsheet that I put my students in. Um, as you see, it says list student names here. And this is how I keep up with my centers, which I'm going to explain here in just a minute. And so then in week four or center number three, they are going to use the author and illustrator blank book to complete an activity. And so if you come over here to the resources, there it is right there, author and illustrator blank book. It's going to open that up for you. And so the way that this works, you can use my library lesson plans as either standalone lessons or as library centers. I'm a big fan of library centers as you see in a lot of my materials and so that's the way that I prefer to teach my lessons. So the way that the center rotation works I'll tell you a quick story. Uh, when I had first, when I first started in the library, I had an hour with my students and so it was really easy for me to set up three stations in the library and give my students an adequate amount of time to create or finish the project that we had started working on. And so when I went to a different school, I only had 35 minutes with my students. And so that was posing a challenge for me to do centers the way that I wanted to do them. And so what I decided to do was to rotate centers each week instead of rotate them during each class period. And so I'll tell you a little bit about how that works. What I do is during week one of the month, that is your overview time. So you will go over the the activities, the three activities for the rest of the month. 
you will tell the students what they'll be doing. You can show them the activities and I even demonstrate the activities for the students. And so that way they'll know what to expect when they come into the library for the next three weeks. This is also a really good time to get any kind of housekeeping things out of the way for your students. Maybe they're making a mess in the library and you need to address that. Maybe they need some help using shelf markers. You know, any anything that you need to address if you're finished with the activity overview, it may not take your entire class period. So that's a good time to take care of those little minor things that come up from time to time. And so for month two, okay, I'm sorry, for week two, week two is actually your first station. So you have your three groups, let's call them A, B, and C. Maybe group A is going to go to week two first. And you'll have this all written out in your spreadsheet so the students will know where to go. And so they will spend the entire class period in this station. The other two groups will be at a different station. So group B might be at this station and group C will be at this station. And so what's going to happen the next week is they're going to rotate to a new station. So group A would come to this one, group B would come to this one, group C would come up here to this one. Okay, so then the last week, of course, the students will go to the station that they have not visited yet. And you'll have all this on your handy spreadsheet so that way they can't say, oh, we've already done that station. You know, you can just say, no, I have it right here. You guys go to the computer station or whatever station that it is. So that's how I do the stations. You are welcome, of course, to rotate them during a single class period. Maybe you have more time. Maybe you have 50 minutes to an hour. If you do, you could rotate within a single class period and maybe even keep those same stations for the next week just to give the students a little bit more exposure to that. If you have to work in checkout with your centers or stations, that is a little bit more difficult. Um, I recommend either making checkout a center or doing that at the beginning or end. You can even split the students up into teams and let some check out at the beginning and some check out at the end. It's totally up to you the way that you want to do it. And of course, my lesson plans are also able to be taught individually as well. So if you prefer just to teach this lesson to the entire group and not do centers at all, that is an option as well. And that's why I have my lesson plans set up the way that I do. They are very flexible. You can teach them any way that you'd like to teach them. So I hope that that helps answer some of the questions. I um, also wanted to let you know, usually the way that I set up, week one is the overview. So that's just a full group lesson. Week two is usually a teacher directed center. So usually it's learning something new, uh, something that maybe we haven't taught in the library yet. So usually I stay with that group, week two's group. And of course, all groups will rotate through your station. Um, but I just stay with that particular station. Week three is usually a review station, so something we've done in the past and probably doesn't need a lot of teacher intervention. You can always assign a student team leader to be the question person, the person that the students go to to ask questions before they come to you. And that helps alleviate some of that need for you to be in every single station. Um, also, week four is usually a technology station. So usually I have some kind of technology uh, activity in the week four station. So that's how I set my stations up. If you have questions about that, be sure to let me know, but I hope that that clears up and explains some of the um, questions that I've had about the way that my lesson plans are set up. Thanks so much.